Hello and welcome from Berlin. My name is Martin von Wolfersdorf at Wolfersdorf Consulting Berlin. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Smithers team, for inviting me to present. I enjoy being a business partner with Smithers in three disciplines. First, we had three consulting projects on Carbon Black together. Second, we founded together the Recovered Carbon Black Conference, which last year in Berlin had 260 participants. And last but not least, we wrote together the report The Impact on Sustainability on Carbon Black to 2041. This presentation from Black to Green, an overview on sustainable carbon blacks, is based on that report and, of course, on my expert knowledge as a consultant. And this presentation is free from ChatGPT and artificial intelligence. Sustainability. We all know carbon black, but what is sustainable carbon black? Is recovered carbon black made in Asia from European exported tires and sold back to Europe sustainable? Is Russian or Iranian carbon black sustainable? Is Indian carbon black made from Russian oil sustainable? I leave the answers to you. Sustainability depends on assessment criteria, system boundaries, and more. But foremost, sustainability depends on us, the people, and our behavior. Are we able to sustain a behavior forever? That is sustainability. Our assessment criteria for carbon black sustainability could include ethics, percent recycled material, percent bio-based material, the scope one, two, and three of the carbon emissions, and more. Sustainable carbon black is a group of carbon blacks. Let's first look at circular and renewable carbon blacks from the furnace process. Being carbon black industry colleagues, we all know the furnace process. About 95% of the world's carbon black is manufactured with this process. Over the last 80 years, it was cost optimized. Production line increased from some 40,000 tons per year to over 150,000 tons per year, especially in China. The kiln temperature went up to 2,000 degrees Celsius thanks to new refractory cladding. Now, it is kind of difficult to further improve and maybe we can only expect incremental improvements. But wait, feedstock selection is part of the process. This is often forgotten also with recovered carbon black. The quickest solution for sustainability is change the feedstock from a fossil feedstock to a sustainable feedstock, either circular or renewable. Circular feedstocks can come from tire prolysis oil. Maybe we need to distill and only use the heavy fraction though. Bio-based feedstocks can come, for example, from pine pitch, uh, which is not competing with the food chain. The tier one carbon black maker Orion Engineered Carbons was the first to offer both circular and renewable carbon blacks. Cabot is also working on both and this year presented a mass balance circular N234 carbon black. But what is mass balance? Due to the small available volume of circular carbon black oil, this feedstock is mixed to the main feedstock, but it is attributed only to the circular carbon black and not the other carbon blacks, which actually are also produced with it. You see, the drawback with circular and renewable carbon blacks is there still are carbon emissions in the scope one and two. The carbon emissions are only really looking good, meaning negative, in scope 3, in the value chain upstream. We have the same emissions in scope 1, the direct emissions from production, and scope 2, energy purchases, which of course are typically small as the furnace plants make their own power. The production scale is limited to the availability of circular and biogenic feedstocks. I think Circular carbon blacks could be about 1.5% of the global carbon black supply by 2031, and renewable carbon blacks could be about 0.5% of the 
of the global supply of carbon blacks by 2031. The beauty of this is that the concept can be transferred to Chinese carbon black production just by changing the feedstock. The yield of production can be affected, but all types of carbon blacks can be manufactured, both soft grades and hard grades, and specialty blacks. Let's look at methane pyrolysis carbon black. Industrialized nations aim to reduce carbon emissions to slow down global warming and the climate crisis. Hydrogen is a key enabler for many clean tech processes, including carbon capture and fuel cell mobility. You might know that hydrogen is the most abundant element on Earth. Yet, its production is quite energy hungry and depending on the process can create high carbon emissions. Now, methane pyrolysis is a promising technology because instead of carbon dioxide emissions, the carbon is sequestered into a solid form. Globally, there are more than 20 startups developing methane pyrolysis technology for hydrogen production. Most intend to disregard or neglect the commercialization of the solid carbon. There is one and only one company which has accomplished to engineer a carbon black product. That is the company Monolith. Monolith acquired and commercialized a French patent and so far offers a range of semi-reinforcing carbon blacks. A hard black was produced on the lab reactor, but not yet in the industrial production. The technology readiness level of methane pyrolysis carbon blacks is TRL7, meaning demonstration and full-scale engineering. At the moment, the scale of production is smaller than a typical furnace carbon black line. Typical furnace carbon black lines produce at least 100,000 tons per year. And there is only one plant in the USA. A scale up to a couple of hundred thousand tons per year is planned within the next couple of years. I think methane pyrolysis carbon blacks could be about 1% of the global carbon black supply by 2031. How green is it? Well, if you use biomethane, not natural gas, and also 100% renewable energy, it can be very green. Natural gas and US standard grid power, of course, gives a less green picture. Additional production capacity could come out of a collaboration with SK Group in South Korea. Personally, I don't see relevance yet for the Chinese carbon black industry unless a collaboration joint venture with Monolith pops up for China. Recovered carbon black. Some of you might know that this is my field of main expertise. A tire pyrolysis process decomposes end-of-life tires into the main mass flows of gas, oil, and carbon residue. Of course, the reality is much more complex. And there are other slipstreams of materials that also have to be commercialized. However, in order to make recovered carbon black, we need two additional process streams, as well upstream as downstream. Upstream, we need to select end-of-life tires to ensure a consistent chemical composition going into the pyrolysis reactor. Downstream, we need to take out the remaining steel particles, then mill to a D97 particle size of less than 10 micron, and finally pelletize, just like furnace carbon black. Recovered carbon black has its own ASTM committee, D36. You might know, rubber is D11, and carbon black, furnace carbon black is D24. Many colleagues from the carbon black and the tire industries have helped to develop new test methods for recovered carbon black. Those methods are required because of the heterogeneous chemical composition of recovered carbon black, because some of the uh, methods developed for furnace carbon black just don't work for recovered carbon black. Recovered carbon black is a mixture of different carbon blacks, depending on the tire feedstock. For example, if you use truck tires, we could have more 100 and 200 group carbon blacks. If you use car tires, it depends on the region. In Europe, we have a lot of silica, so the inorganic material is added into the recovered carbon black as well. 
um, and we'll probably see some 300 and 600 types of carbon black. There might be zinc uh, sulfide as well um, as the inorganic material, as well as carbonaceous material, which comes from the carbonization of rubber polymer chains. Because of that, recovered carbon black can currently only replace or part replace semi-reinforcing carbon blacks, not yet the highly reinforcing hard blacks. After published specifications by me in 2021, you might have heard of the RCB1 specification and specifications by the RCB rubber project by Michelin and Bridgestone in 2022. I believe this year the ASTM D36 group can make progress on recovered carbon black classification, just like we have for furnace carbon blacks. As for the offerings and the activities of the carbon black industry, Biller Carbon is offering the continuer brand of sustainable carbonaceous materials based on tire prolysis carbon, but with the high quality of a tier one carbon black producer. Cabot this year has created the Evolve platform, which was presented on the uh, tire technology in Hanover, Germany, including a 550 blend with 10% recovered carbon black. Also to mention is the Polish company Makrochem, which for years is working on blends of furnace carbon blacks with recovered carbon black. The technology readiness level of recovered carbon blacks is between TRL6 pilot stage and TRL9 industrial manufacture, depending on the supplier. How green is recovered carbon black? Recovered carbon black is a 100% recycled product, but it is manufactured in a process using temperatures up to 800 degrees Celsius, which can have carbon footprint implications. Typically, the tire prolysis gas is used for heating prolysis kilns. That means the energy is already delivered with the feedstock. Electrically heated tire prolysis processes do have the option to source green renewable power from solar and wind. Under those conditions, even a high temperature prolysis can operate with a minimal carbon footprint. Currently, only about 70,000 tons of recovered carbon black in high quality is available globally. Michelin and Bridgestone say, though, that they see a 1 million ton per year market for recovered carbon black by 2030. I think recovered carbon blacks could be some 3% of the global carbon black supply by 2031. In China, about 10% of the 10 million end-of-life tires per year are converted by prolysis. Only very few Chinese companies do so-called deep processing and refine recovered carbon black to high-quality ASTM criteria. This is a tremendous opportunity for China given the high volume of end-of-life tire feedstock. These four carbon blacks were mentioned in my report. But let's look at something really crazy. Could you make carbon black from carbon dioxide? How great would it be if we could use the carbon from carbon dioxide as a feedstock for carbon black? Well, there is a process for that. The process is called the noise process after its late inventor. And the company working on it is solid carbon products. This material does not fulfill the ASDM criteria for furnace carbon black due to feedstock composition and also nodule shape. The feedstock reactants are carbon dioxide and hydrogen. The carbon content is similar to recovered carbon black, meaning less than 80%, and the nodules are filaments rather than spheres. Now you might ask yourself what are the remaining 20% of the material and this is the uh, catalyst used for the process. Interestingly, carbon dioxide conversion carbon black has both polar and unpolar surface groups, which makes it partly hydrophobic and partly hydrophilic. The technology readiness level of carbon dioxide conversion carbon black is TRL6 pilot stage. Its current production capacity is about 300 kilograms per month. Solid Carbon Products has completed a range of in-rubber tests and positions its products against the N200 group of carbon blacks. The company is interested in licensing and has sampled the tire maker Goodyear. The timeline for the scale-up is difficult to estimate right now. 
and probably depends on the factors of hydrogen availability and hydrogen price. Now, if you ask me which of these four sustainable carbon blacks is the best one, I would reply to you, this is an unfair question. I think uh, all four of them have uh, their advantages. They are all are sustainable carbon blacks and it really needs to be decided on a project by project basis, which one is the right one for you. Specifically for China, I could imagine that circular carbon blacks and renewable carbon blacks are of special interest because of the high coal tar prices that make uh, Chinese carbon black much too expensive uh, at the moment. Greenhouse gas emissions of the circular carbon black are not as good as the um, greenhouse gas emissions of the renewable black. Uh, and that is in the sum of scope one, two, three. So uh, the renewable carbon black is a little bit more uh, green and more sustainable than the circular carbon black. But it depends on what you want to achieve. At the moment, I see um, not many chances or opportunities for methane paralysis carbon black in China, but that could really change if um, a collaboration um, pops up uh, and a joint venture for um, a monolith plant in uh, China. I think the next one will be uh, Korea rather than China though. And of course, recovered carbon black. We already have a very established uh, tire pyrolysis business in China. We need to add and improve on the deep processing of the uh, recovered carbon black. And I think uh, that is a brilliant uh, opportunity for uh, China. So all in all, uh, I think uh, sustainable carbon blacks is a very nice opportunity for China. Thank you for watching my presentation. I'm online for your questions. If you want to know details about these sustainable carbon blacks, you can buy the Smithers report, The Impact of Sustainability on Carbon Black to 2041. Thank you very much.